Hi, my name's Ellie Greeny, and I'm the Commercial Director at Transition Partners. We're a tech recruitment consultancy with an office in Leeds covering the UK market and an office based in Berlin. I've worked within tech for the past five years and find the market fascinating. I'm really passionate about helping women not only get in tech, but really advance their career with an exciting industry that can provide endless opportunities. I love networking and finding out about other people's stories. I decided to set up the journey of a woman in tech to share knowledge, wisdom, and hopefully have a laugh along the way. Feel free to get in touch on LinkedIn to see how you can get involved. I hope you enjoy the podcast. and welcome to the journey of a woman in tech. So today I am super excited to have the fabulous Amanda Newman on the show. She's a senior manager at Accenture. Amanda has had a 25 year career in tech, working for some of the largest companies in the world, such as Shell, Microsoft, and now she's leading the way and having a fabulous time at Accenture. Just over three years ago now, Amanda also founded Career Mum, a community for all that want to support and empower women to reach their potential that has now grown to a community of over 6,000 global members. Amanda is passionate about DNI and uses her position to influence and really drive improvements. Amanda is currently shortlisted for the Northern Power Women Mentor of the Year. She's also been nominated for the We Are City Rising Stars Award. Personally, Amanda has a lovely family. She's got four children, a 16-year-old son, an 11-year-old daughter, and two five-year-old twin boys. Hello, Amanda. Hi there. Nice to speak to you. Hi. So great to have you on the podcast, and thank you so much for uh, fitting us in today. I know it mustn't be easy being a full-time, full, fully-time employed and having four children. It's um, Yeah, you must be a super busy lady. Yeah, it is busy, and but everyone's busy, aren't they? And you've got to make time for the things you're passionate about. 100 percent and also yeah no and I'm so excited to talk all about career mum as well I think it's such an amazing initiative so I'd love to um why don't we start with that actually tell us tell us how it all came about and and where you're up to on the scale of the community that you've built today yeah so um like I said three years ago three years ago just over um Mm -hmm. I was preparing to take redundancy from Shell after being there for 20 years and um I was concerned about, I'd been in global roles, I was in a senior position and I was going to take a year out to be a stay-at-home parent Um, and I've never done that before. Um, Through my exit, I at Shell sponsored me to have an executive coach, a lady called Amanda Davey, who was tremendous. Um, Fantastic. And we talked about uh, how, what I needed to make sure I left feeling empowered and supported myself. And one of the things I was worried about was losing my global network. Um, but also um, forgetting all of the skills and the brilliant training and things that I'd had access to through Shell as a, a senior woman at Shell. Um, so I'd started to download all of that info in the careermum.co.uk as a blog. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I just started blogging. And then within my first few weeks of blogging, I was getting about 500 hits a week. And I thought, you know what, I actually really like to engage with this audience. So I set up the Facebook group, which has now grown tremendously wow. um, we do a lot of support and obviously it's just uh what we call it accenture like a side of desk it's it's something that i have to squeeze in evenings and weekends and um, it's provided a lot of support to me over the last three years and and um, people find opportunities there there's uh, men and women parents or not anybody who wants to support and empower women to reach their potential so i'm proud we've got a great group of admins um who support me in making sure it's a safe and um, comfortable place to have those discussions that we all need to have. Amazing. That sounds incredible. And I cannot wait to check it out. So well done you. And I guess thank you for, for your involvement in the community. And it sounds like you're doing a stellar job of um, helping people out. And particularly like the tough the, the tough year that everyone's had with COVID and, and being a parent and managing a full-time job. I, I imagine the support network that's come off the back of this year is probably stronger than ever. Exactly. Yeah. The organic growth has just been tremendous. I've stopped blogging as much. I don't have time for it really. Mm. But um, I do share successes on LinkedIn in and some of the stories and and just organically people find us and join and and get support they need that's so lovely yeah I really really do love the I love the idea and love the concept so um let's talk about your current role then if you can give us a brief introduction into what you're up to at Accenture yeah I'm currently um, leading a shared service of PMO Mm -hmm. and service management resources so um 
we deliver internally PMO services to many clients that are, are being supported across Accenture. So it's a great role. I've got about 60 resources up in Newcastle um, who are fantastic, great team, um, really inspiring individuals who bring fun to their job um, and are keen to learn and grow, which is exactly what I enjoy leading. That's so great, isn't it? So is it, so are you, are you always fully remote then because you're based over in Cheshire? Yes, um, I have been virtual on and off for probably, you know, in, in three different employers um, for about the last 15 years. Yeah, um, I'm sure that's been really helpful then sharing like the things that the tips that you've had over the years. Yeah, it feels with... very comfortable. I've got like a really yeah. nice setup in my study, um, though, interestingly, I joined Accenture about 18 months ago now. Mm -hmm. And um, my first my first project was client site. So I was on my client site in Manchester um, mm -hmm. and I realized how much I'd missed being um, on site with people. So four days a week, I would go and be on site. I really Lovely. loved it. So when lockdown hit, um, returning to working from home was quite a shock and, uh, and I missed that contact. And the, I, I'm clearly an extrovert. Um, I got a lot of energy from being around people and that's how a lot of my ideas were shaped yeah yeah i feel exactly the same like i love being around my team and the, the the most exciting ideas and that passion really comes when you're all together so it is it has been challenging hasn't it turning that remote so amazing it's great great what you're up to now it'd be good to go all the way back then to talk about um your career and how you got to to where you are today yeah sure so um I mean, starting right at the very beginning, I went to many schools growing up, many different mm -hmm. schools, and landed um, in Cheadle Hume in Cheshire um, yep. in a boarding school. My dad, my parents worked abroad. Um, my oh, my wow. dad had a job abroad, which supported me going to boarding school, which in, in hindsight has given me a lot of opportunities. But I really struggled having gone to many different schools. I struggled academically. Um, and, and I think that's an important part of the story to tell for people who are earlier in career now and perhaps experiencing that failure to launch due to the pandemic mm -hmm. uh, you know it's it's early days take one day at a time so um I, I went to boarding school it was only when I was about 15 I realized I had a real love for maths um because I struggled with counting and reading till I was probably about 12 mm -hmm. um and after my A levels, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do next. And I knew I wanted to do a degree in maths. And my dear old dad, who's no longer with us, said, um, computers are the next big thing. This was in, you know, this was a long time ago. Um, mm -hmm. And I hadn't really, you know, the, the only people that, that went to the computer lab at school were, you know, people I'm friends with now through my network. But, you know, then they, they were kind of the geeky computer guys. There was mm -hmm. no girls getting involved um, and it wasn't cool. So I went off to um, Liverpool, John Moores, and did math stats and computing and realised that um, the coding element of computing was, was tough. Um, and I'm at, in hindsight now, I wish I pursued that further because I think I was probably put off by being the only girl. Right. Um, but also I loved the maths and stats um, side and I, and I did a year in industry. That's what attracted me to the degree. So I, I supported um, the IT systems at Cable and Wireless. Okay, amazing. Fantastic opportunity. And then um, spent a year with them, um, kind of doing first and second line service desk support, which opened my eyes to PCs and it being much bigger than kind of com computing. And through my degree, we'd, we'd had to build PCs and stuff. So then going out with my static strap and a big desktop, <laughs> and, going the and actually taking the computer apart and fixing it actually was quite good fun um so yeah then I went back and finished my degree and then um actually went to IBM oh wow um and did a year just under a year there mm -hmm. um on the help desk and and an opportunity came up to go and work as a contractor for Shell and so I moved um and it was probably the best decision I made <laughs> um and yeah, that, that then started my 20 year career at Shell, starting off as a help desk analyst and, and my dream job then became to lead the help desk, which I got probably about eight years into my career. Amazing. Fantastic. And then let's talk about Shell and how you progressed through into the global role you were at when you when you left Shell then, because I think sometimes there's kind of like this um, preconceived idea that to be able to get anywhere, you quite often have to leave 
but it would be good to hear to talk about how you manage that and how you manage the progression to become such a key part of um, the IT department at Shell. Yeah, I think um, that might be true in some organisations, in big global organisations, I don't think that's the case because what you find is every different department you work in is like a new company. Often it's a new network. And of course, working in the um, IT organisation or in one of the IT functions, um, you're often building new networks, but you are taking with you your credibility and your reputation. So that's mm -hmm. that's the benefit of staying in an, in an employer because people by then, I was one of the senior leaders in the Northwest. Most people had heard of me. Um, they knew what I had a reputation of delivering. And, um, you know, a, a lot of people were aware of what my skills were. But also, most importantly, um, I had mentors and I had sponsors. So I'm sure you've talked about this many times on podcast. Mm -hmm. So um, I had many mentors, but they then some of them, um, as they no, no longer became my mentors, they went on to be VPs my, themselves. Mm -hmm. They became sponsors for me. So behind closed doors, when opportunities were being discussed, then often my name was was put forward by those sponsors to say, well, Amanda could do that role and I'd get a tap on the shoulder. Um, Shell had something where you had to be in seat for four years delivering in a role before you could apply for something. But actually, I don't think I was ever in a role for longer than about 18 to 24 months. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and they weren't always a promotion, but you know, um, and perhaps one of my learnings along the way was I was always so flattered that I just said yes to everything, which is not always a bad thing, but maybe, mm. you know, looking back, I probably could have taken more ownership and steered my career a bit stronger. Mm. Um, but it, it didn't do any harm. I built a wide network, um, many of whom I'm still connected with. We've got a group called um, Life, da Life After Shell, which is for people <laughs> who have left Shell. That's and great. I think if you ask anybody in that community, can anybody support me? Then, um, you know, it's like family. People help each other out. So, um, you know, it's really it, incredible. It's, it will always be part of my um, Part, part of who I am that such a big part of your journey isn't it and to spend yeah. so long with the business and and throughout that time you obviously had your children as well so all of your children whilst yeah. you're at Shell yeah. as well so um amazing so when you left Shell what what, what position were you in and what was your responsibility when you took um, the prior to I was actually a project manager at the point of leaving um when I was off on maternity leave mm. um they went through a reorg and actually I, I didn't get informed about it. I was kind of dropped off the radar. This is, again, the importance of um, wow. sponsors. Um, my, I, I'd, not, I'd not continued to remind my sponsors that I was out there. Mm. Um, and so I, I only got told about it through actually having a, an off chance call with one of my team. I just dropped connected with her. But obviously I had twins. It was yeah. about five months after having the twins, life was upside down. It was mental. I was having um, five hours sleep a night with nine wake-ups. So, you know, 20 wow. minutes intervals over five hours, that's all I was getting. So I was broken. Um, and, you know, I engaged with HR and they'd just forgotten about me. So my... That must have really hurt. Yeah, my application for roles, um, I, I did apply for roles and I... And I spoke to many people and I was mm. welcome you know I would have I, yeah. I could have got another role but it was a relocation strategy um which it required you to move to London or go expat mm -hmm. I had I had senior leaders say to me you know if you if you go expat we we can take you which is interestingly now because I think they've probably reduced all of their expat roles but mm. and my husband's a CEO of his own business in the northwest um, oh, wow. we are you know we're based here it wasn't an option for me and I saw many of my friends who um, had decided to stay and commute to London maybe three or four days a week. And I decided that it just wasn't for me with four kids, including twins. It's just not something I could sustain. So I thought, you know, the time is right that I probably just need to um, take control and leave. Yeah. Uh, and that's hard, isn't it? Because it's kind of like the end of an era, 20 years with a business. Most of your life has been with Shell at that point isn't it so it's um that must have been really tough and uh, a brave decision to make and um how did you feel through that period then so you, you you took redundancy and you took a bit of time out right yeah well I planned to take a year out and then I thought I'd start looking but actually um being a career mum you know and, and it's all I've ever known 
Yeah. It was hard for me to leave it all behind. So then mm. I became really active in the Northwest in our local community, um, supporting and mentoring individuals, supporting business startups. Um, and then I was starting to think, well, maybe I should actually just use this time and get a paid job. I don't need, I don't know from day one, really from January the 1st, I finished on December the 31st yeah. from January the 1st. I then started with a vengeance as the career mum and becoming visible and, and building my network with, with, I wasn't really a conscious decision, but it was just because I needed something of purpose and a, and a focus beyond my family. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, um, a, old school friend, just the importance of networks, an old school friend got in touch with me and said, um, Microsoft are recruiting and I think you'd be great. Um, and this is the role, and can I, can I refer you for it? And I was like, wow, Microsoft, the, <laughs> one of, you know, the biggest tech company in the world from the biggest oil and gas company in the world, in my, in my perception, um, that would be amazing. So I then went through a um, whole interview, rigorous interview process at Microsoft and, um, and ended up getting a job there. So I started- yeah, They used like five stages, aren't they, Microsoft? It was really, it was really intense. Multiple yeah. interviews, multiple trips to Reading from Wilmslow. Um, but I was really excited about it. It felt like, you know, after, after um, a sense of belonging is really important to me. So after being, Shell becoming like family, I was thinking actually maybe I could love somebody, something else as much as Shell. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I started there on June the 1st. So um, in total, then it was it wasn't quite as long as you planned. <laughs> no, and considering all of the interviews and all of that process, really, I didn't have much time out at all. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. It's tough, isn't it, balancing all of that and and balancing a family, and obviously your husband's got a business as well. That's um, yeah, it, it, an incredibly busy family. I can uh, I can yeah. imagine it's it, it's definitely got its challenges. Let's talk about the challenges that you felt like you faced along the years. You mentioned when at university you felt that as, as a woman in tech and as a leader in tech. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean to be honest, personally, I don't actually think I've ever felt discriminated against for being mm-hmm. a woman. I've almost used it to my advantage. I maybe yeah. I like the thrill of surprise. I have often, especially not so much now, but earlier in my career, walked into a room, I hate to say it, but full of middle-aged white men, often mm. very direct Dutch people. And I'm generalizing and actually love, love um, different cultures. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it was a great education for me how to um, learn to manage stakeholders and manage different people. Um, but I think often I would be around the table and, and people would be curious and they'd be like, you know, who's this blonde girl? You know, sometimes I'd get asked to bring the drinks. Um, yeah, well. uh, sometimes, often I would get the question, so how long have you been at Shell? And I knew what they really wanted to know was how old are you? What are you doing here? Um, and so I'd, sometimes, you know, I'd maybe been there five years. And I'd, I'd got to a relatively senior role for my age at that point mm. because I was really keen to push my career as hard as I could before I had kids. Yeah, I knew that I went through a period from like 32 to late 30s of career caretaking where I, I stabilised and just focused on delivering in my, mm. in my role. I knew that I wanted to get as far as I could before I had my kids. Um, so I was often tempted to go like 20 years and just see their reaction. <laughs> <laughs> I but just I look did, so young. <laughs> I was always very aware that um, there was a perception around me that other people had that um, it was perhaps um, more a place for men and boys. Mm. And, um, and sometimes that was for other women. You know, I went to a training course once in Shell and I was chatting to some, somebody, a guy um, a diff- from, a, from somewhere in Europe. And he said to me, so what do you do? And I explained that I worked in retail IT and I was leading our site system strategy. And he went, oh, gosh, I'm surprised. And I was like, well, why are you surprised? By what? You don't look like somebody who works in IT. And I said, well, what do I look like? And he went, I'd say more somebody who works in marketing. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. And he was someone quite senior as well, saying yeah, that. It's absolutely crazy, here, isn't it? Here, yeah. So, you okay. know, I'm very aware that there's this yeah. subconscious bias that takes yeah. place. And actually, yeah. I love delight. I, I take delight in surprising people. 
yeah it almost feels like you don't have to have to do that much to surprise them and they go wow she's actually yeah i bet he never made that mistake again <laughs> <laughs> educated him uh, yeah. educated that day uh, i think it's interesting isn't it and i think particularly when you work in oil and gas as well it, it, it is well, i guess one of those industries where where it does seem to be more male dominated but um clearly like you say having that network and those um sponsors that you have within the business has has has, has helped in your amazing career and it sounds like you've done some fantastic work for shower they were extremely lucky to have you for so long so um what about do you think the challenges that the next generation will face and what can we do to overcome those challenges? Because we want not just problems, we want solutions. And I think with our listeners, they always want to know what they can do to help. So yeah, what, what challenges the next gen are going to have um, and whether they be people entering tech later in life or not and what we can do to help these people. Yeah. I mean, I definitely think there's huge power in networks. So joining companies as an experienced hire, um, entering tech later in careers, returnships. I'm massive, a massive fan of returnships. Um, mm-hmm. And that was one of the parting things I did for Shell um, okay. as I was delivering a project, uh, which was okay, but it wasn't um, it fulfilling me, wasn't fulfilling my passions. I thought mm-hmm. I want to leave a legacy. So I designed a returnships program. I also designed a mentoring program for our 2000 women in Shell India, because I recognized that they were our future talent pipeline of women. And if yeah. we weren't investing in them, then we were not going to hit gender. Balance. So I left proudly with those um, those things underway. But That's amazing. Um, I think the challenge for the next generation is, I think one of the big challenges is this failure to launch. So I, I get a lot of early career um, resources coming to work in my team. They're working virtually. Some of them have never been into an office. Yeah. And they might be a year into their role now and they still haven't been into an office. And they just, some of the things we assume we know, um, they perhaps don't get that introduction. I Last week I ran our um, analyst uh, school for welcoming new graduates and I took them through a week of training. Amazing. And I didn't have to show them, um, you know, I, I, I didn't want to patronise them. So there was one session, mm. how to set up a meeting and how to invite people to a meeting. And I said, well, obviously, of course, you've all done this before. And they were like, no, we haven't. So I think that they, they're going to need their hands holding. They're going to need guiding. I also managed to get a video where... But like you say, it's hard, isn't it? Because you don't want to patronise an issue. You could, you, yeah. You, yeah, like I think like the assumption, the assumption it, it's just making sure that the delivery of how we ask these questions about what support we can give to onboarders remotely yeah. is, the, is the best way to do it, isn't it? Because yeah. that's, that's the main thing that we ask in the right way. And I think help build their network, make sure they have a mentor, um, make sure they've got an onboarding buddy, mm-hmm. really give them that support. Communication is key. You know, real-time feedback if they need to do things differently. Don't wait till, you know, just good good leadership and management yeah. is really important when we're all remote and things can be misunderstood. Can you tell us a bit more then about the returnship programme that you put together at Shell? Because that's always really of interest. And I know that people struggle with how to set something like that up, but it'd be really interesting if you can tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah. And when I left, I left it in the hands of HR. Um, So it hadn't actually been implemented, but I I designed the approach. Um, And I think I implemented it maybe six to 12 months later. Mm -hmm. Um, So I don't know the full details of, of what they rolled out but I, I got a ping from one person who was on the team at the time to say, you know, it's live and how it's going. So I'm very pleased. I don't this know is so tough, people. isn't it? I think returning. So and there's so much advantage to be able to retrain and people after a, a long career break. And I'm sure that's something that comes up really often with career mums is those kind of questions like, what's next for me and how will it be when I return? So I think, um, yeah, it's great that people like yourselves are putting in positive things in place to help support people. Um, so it's been a superb career with, uh, I'm, I'm sure, many highs and lows along the way. What what would you say is your greatest achievement? Um, that's a, that is a tough question. I it can be personal and professional because I'm sure you've got lots of personal ones as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I think my my greatest achievement, obviously, I've got to say, is my family and yeah. and managing that through this whole crisis um, with everybody relatively sane. It's been really tough. I'm, I'm not going to lie, I'm exhausted. Um, we talked in the group the other day and I said I was just bone tired. You know, it's it, the mental and physical exhaustion. It's probably not even so much physical, but my mind's never stopped. You know, you've got yeah. full-time work. 
you've also got to make sure everybody's fed and in lessons in time but my my biggest achievement um probably was actually leading the health desk back back in um well 16 years ago I, yeah. I went off on maternity leave this was like the the dream job I'd always wanted. I'd started as a help desk analyst. The help desk was now by now about 200 resources. I'd done wow. a global operations role where I'd been responsible for our processes and procedures globally in a 24 seven operation. Um, for, and, and that covered about 600 people. But I really wanted to lead the, the help desk, which was based in Withenshaw, Manchester. Um, and I'd applied for the role once before uh, after, and I'd not got it. And I was devastated probably three years earlier. Um, and so I applied for the role and I was off on, it was, I think I interviewed for it about, about a week after I'd had my first child. Wow. Um, and I was exhausted and, and overwhelmed. And um, then I got a phone call from my boss who had been my biggest sponsor, a guy in Houston, in Houston called Lewis Houston. Um, and he, he phoned me up. I remember I was coming out of mother care carrying a load of nappies and he's like are you on your own you might want to sit down and he's like you've got the job um, <laughs> and, and I can, and obviously I was only two weeks into maternity leave which I planned to take for a year I ended up taking 13 months off because I needed an operation wow. um, and so then I they backfilled me for that period so they put a, a temporary resource in and waited for me to come back so I was so proud that's that they so out. lovely isn't it and that really shows how how highly regarded you were in the organisation to do that because it must have obviously cost them more money to be able to keep hold the job than if they'd have offered it to someone else. So I guess yeah. that really proves it. And that sounds like it was just what you needed at that time. Like I can imagine. Yeah, I remember I to be I cried, I was speechless and then I cried because I just thought, you know, having my first child, I was like, the time is not right. I'm probably going to miss out again. Yeah, uh, it, it was tough because I came back after 13 months and I got a phone call from our leadership team over in the Netherlands. And the first thing I was tasked to do, I had to hold a town hall with everybody and tell them that we we're planning to outsource the, the help desk. Oh my gosh, and that's um, the worst week that you could ever come back to having to deliver news like that. Yeah. Wow. Um, so obviously you've returned to work three times now because you've taken three little breaks with your lovely children. Um, um, it would be good if you can give like any words of advice or is there any like key tips that you give for people that are, are taking the break and they're about to go back across career mums? Because I think it's such a precious time, isn't it? And so challenging and emotional. But I think if there's any tips that you that you really recommend, that would be awesome. Yeah. Um, and this is for men and women because mm, yeah. like men are starting to take parental leave. Mm -hmm. I've got somebody who I work with at the moment who's about to go off next week. I'm so proud that he's taking that and I'm hoping to support him as much as I can um so I think it's easy to go off and just be in your bubble and mm -hmm. and just forget about work but it's actually important to try and stay connected use those keep in touch days mm -hmm. um, make sure you understand your IT systems so when I'd found out about that job and tried to log on because I hadn't logged on for three months my PC had been disabled and my, yeah. my, and my idea had been deleted. And all of that stuff that I had on my PC, I was like, oh my God, you know, yeah. like 17 years of history. Um, wow. And that automatically feels like a barrier, doesn't it? Like I can imagine yeah. if you're in the state of mind, you're getting yourself all, all ready for your, like, for your return of day. You've got to get yourself back up, like into the mindset, that workspace mm. and then that just it's like little things like that that become like a really big barrier so I think it's really important like you say to keep on top of things like that so you don't have to the first time you laptop on you're like oh my god I'm locked out yeah so, uh, and, and just keep so, learning if you can during that period or at least stay connected with um your industry or um, people in your network so I was only through lifting my head up after leaving Charlotte I realized there was so much going on in the north yeah. and, and across the UK and globally um, you know, I, I took part in a, a webinar in India just late last year. There's just so much going on that is aligned with my purpose and values to support and empower women, especially women in tech. If that's you, if that, you know, get involved. And that's just a great way to add something else to your story for when you do return to work and to come back. One of the problems in returning is sometimes you come back and you feel like you've lost your confidence a bit. Um, yes that yeah. imposter syndrome can be huge I didn't yeah. believe coming back after the twins because I just by then was like I've done this before but yeah. after, after my eldest it was it was crushing 
Mm, yeah, I think I think so. And, it, and also, it's such a great way to, you can really lean on that community. It, it's, it's one of those things, yeah. isn't it? I think it, the community does seem quite daunting. Like, say, if you it, in the thick of it, like you were at Shell, you didn't quite realise how much... Um, how much was going on but you can really rely on these people there's so much support yeah. and people do want to help and yeah. whatever challenges you're going through someone's been through it before and they've come out of it the other side and they're more than willing to share their advice so having that and mentors along the way is a really great way for doing that isn't it yeah yeah what about role models who's really stood out for you along the years as, as being a role model and an inspiration um I mean my dad has to go first obviously he yeah. always he, he worked all over the world. Um, he had periods out of work. What did he do? He was um, an engineer by trade, but he didn't get his degree until he was in his mid-30s from a, a working class background. Um, wow. Started off down the mines in the northeast. I'm from Sunderland originally. <laughs> and um, he, you know, he just aspired to continue to learn and grow and improve himself. Um, and by that point, he had three young daughters, you know, to do a degree with three young daughters that must have been really tough yeah. um but it's then financial commitment as well as the time isn't it to be able to back them to be able to commit to something like yeah, that so you, i'm sure he must yeah. have had jobs going as well mm-hmm. um and then finding work he you know he couldn't find work so he then moved abroad he, he took roles abroad and then when i was nine he took took me with him to saudi arabia so they they lived across the middle east and africa which actually gave me my love for diversity. I, you know, missing traveling so much, it's painful. But um, <laughs> my dad, um, he, he was getting ready to retire. He was 65, he was getting ready to leave Nigeria after being there for 15 years. And he suddenly took ill and it turned out he had a terminal brain tumor. Gosh, I'm so sorry got, to hear that. He, he didn't get that retirement, um, which we were all so excited about. And my mom obviously was looking forward to welcoming him home. And when I, when, when he, he asked the doctor for his prognosis, um, and the doc, uh, and he, he said it was terminal. Um, my dad said, "You know what? I've had a wonderful life, and I've got three beautiful daughters." So oh. lovely, isn't it? I feel like it make yeah. make get me upset here because I actually we lost my father in law like three months ago, and he was um, sixty seven, and he was working. He was meant to retire three months later. And we had a really sudden heart attack and passed away. And yeah, it was October now, actually. He's but it's just so tough, isn't it? It makes you realise how precious life is and you've really got to enjoy it. But it sounds like your dad was a really he inspirational it, You know, yeah, he had yeah. an amazing career all over the world. He inspired many. You know, he used to go out on Christmas Day in Nigeria on the beach, giving out gifts to the kids. Oh, uh, wow. He, he was a, a, a great man. And so um, I think for me and my sisters, he's been an amazing role model. He was yeah. very traditional, but... Um, I was never led to believe that gender was a barrier. Yeah, yeah, yeah that kind of limitless approach that nothing, there's nothing you can't do. Yeah, um, Amanda, which is yeah, incredible, and that's definitely something that 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 I'm a great believer of as well. So I'd love to um, finish the podcast then with some words of wisdom. So, like, what would you have told your younger self, or what do you tell the career mums? And uh, yeah, words of advice from you. Yeah, um, most importantly, this too shall pass. You know, when you're having a bad day. It's just one day. This is not your whole story. Um, it's just part of your journey. So if you need to take some time out, um, don't let it break you. This too shall pass. And um, that's something I tell myself often. Um, also, I think to just not forget the importance of your community, your network, getting those sponsors, finding your A-team as my exec coach put it. So knowing who's yeah. in your A-team, and be specific with people tell them what you need from them what their roles are it might be work colleagues it might be personal friends you might have two a teams but know who they are and lean on them because when you ask for help people are more than happy to give it yeah I certainly agree with that and a lot of what you said today has really resonated me so thank you so much for coming on the podcast and sharing your story so if people want to get involved in the career mums is it Facebook then is that the best way to connect yeah, if they just search Facebook for the Career Mum, um, there's a page which is our public page, but there's also a closed group that people can join. Um, yeah, come and come and join the discussion. Love Incredible, that. and yeah, we'd love to get you involved in some of our events in the future and talk more about it because that's just such a great initiative. So thank you, and thanks all the admin for putting it all together. It sounds like you're certainly helping a great community of parents there. And if anyone wants to reach out to you personally, is LinkedIn the best best way yeah, to connect? Yeah, very active on LinkedIn. Yeah. Um, you can find me on there. 
easily recognizable from my profile pic. Awesome. Lovely. Thanks so much for coming on the podcast. Right. Thank you for having me.